Hi, how you doing? Justin here. Today we're going to be exploring vibrato, what it is, the different body mechanics you can use to make vibrato, and where it's appropriate to use what different type, because there are many different types of vibrato that you can choose from. And what I found is that many advancing beginner guitar players, that is people that have just started out learning some scales and are having to go at a bit of improvising, are a little bit confused about vibrato. They either use the wrong one in the wrong place, or they do things that they think might be vibrato, like shaking the neck around, but it's not really doing anything. So what I figure I'd do with this lesson is give you a bit of an overview of the different types of vibrato that we're going to deep dive into in the intermediate grades. Just so that you've kind of, you've got a right idea of what you might like to start experimenting. So first of all, what is vibrato? So you could think of vibrato as pitch oscillation around a fundamental note. So what that means is we've got a particular pitch and we're going to oscillate, that is go up and down, so above and below that fundamental pitch while continuing to come back to it. Now, there are many different ways of getting vibrato on the guitar, but most of them only go above the fundamental. The fundamental being like the note when it's most in tune. And then what we're going to do is increase the pitch, so go slightly higher out of tune and then back to the fundamental. You could, of course, go below or both. So you can go above the fundamental, below the fundamental and back, or just above and then back to the fundamental each time, or just below and back to the fundamental. It's really important this coming back to the fundamental pitch, otherwise it tends to to sound a little out of tune. So the two variables that are really, really important that you need to understand are rate and depth. Now the rate is how fast we're moving away and back to the fundamental. So if it was really slow, just as an example, I could play this note. That's no vibrato at all, it's just straight. If I did a very slow vibrato, you hear it going. That's very slow, right? It doesn't really even sound like vibrato. If I did it quite fast, it's kind of boinging a bit. Boing. Like a spring or something. You know. So it's really important. That's the rate. So how fast it is going. Sometimes people, other people call it speed, whatever. I think rate is a good definition. The next one is depth. And that's explaining like how far away from that fundamental pitch are we going. It could be quite subtle. So there's vibrato there. It's very subtle though, or even more subtle. Or wide. Okay, that's moving very far away from that pitch. So that would be a very wide vibrato to have a lot of depth. So really important that you understand this speed and depth are the two variables that you play around with with vibrato. The third one would be, of course, whether you're going just above the note or above and below or just below. Which, whether you go above or below or both, is kind of down to the mechanics, whatever, what technique you're going to use to create the vibrato. Right? Really important. So the first vibrato I want to talk about is the one that people most commonly do, although it's m kind of inappropriate most of the time on electric guitar and acoustic guitar. It's most commonly, most of, no, not most commonly, most effective on a classical guitar. I call it classical vibrato. Some people call it wobbling finger vibrato. It's got a few names, but let's have a little look at it. Okay, this is the kind of classical vibrato. You can see there that I've got my finger on the fret and I'm wobbling my hand backwards and forwards, but it's very subtle. You, it's very hard to make this very extreme. You wouldn't really tend to use it in blues. It's, you, the only time you'd use it really is in a ballad when you've got something going. Now, what's actually happening here mechanically, when you put your finger on the string and you wobble your hand back, you need to keep the pressure down with the finger because it's actually pulling the string that way, just a tiny bit. And when your hand moves back this way, it's moving it ever so slightly flat. So it's raising the pitch when you pull your hand that way and flattening it ever so slightly. 
when you go that way. There's also slightly to do with the effect that your, your finger is actually pushing down a little as well. And because the string is rarely or shouldn't be touching the wood of the neck, when, you, when you're doing this sort of thing, you're kind of pressing a little bit as well. So the, the actual pressure of the finger has a very small variable there as well. But you can hear... It's nice. It's, it's a really nice vibrato. Notice that I'm lifting all of my hand off as well. My thumb is off as well. The only point of contact is with that finger. And the tip of the finger needs to stay still. You don't want to go... It's not really quite going to work, is it? So finger has to stay within the fret. Now, this is the type of vibrato that I see most commonly, and it's... It's a fine vibrato in a very specific circumstance. It sounds great on a classical guitar because the strings are made of nylon. So when you pull the string back, it actually you get a, quite a lot more bend out of it, uh, like a further depth out of it when you do it on a nylon string guitar. On acoustic guitar, I feel like it's even more subtle than on electric guitar. So it's the, the time that you would use that would be in a ballad. If you want to find some great examples of that, listen to some classical guitar and listen to the way they play individual lines because that's pretty much the only type of vibrato classical guitar players use. They don't use the other type, the type that I would call a standard vibrato for electric guitar or acoustic guitar wouldn't be used by classical players. So unlikely to be used by classical guitar players. I'm sure there are some that do it anyway, right? breaking the rules is all about that there aren't so many pop guys that use this kind of thing one great example of a pop guy that plays nylon string guitar though is dominic miller uh stings guitar player incredible musician just a beautiful beautiful guitar player uh you can check it I'll, I'll have a link over on the website to a few of his uh compositions where you'll clearly see him using this style but he mixes it up as well he uses a little bit of the rock one the rock standard sort of style vibratos as well very accomplished musician with every uh, tool in the toolbox available for him. But he's a good example of kind of a modern guy that might use that t kind of vibrato in an in a improvised setting. So if that isn't the standard type of vibrato, what is? Well, I'm glad you asked. Let's have a look at what I call the standard vibrato, which is the most common type of vibrato that you're going to see on acoustic and electric guitar in contemporary music. So the mechanics for this type of vibrato is pushing the string up or down or both. Really interesting here is that the pitch is only going up. Okay, we can't, using this technique, we're bending the string up from the fundamental and back down. Even if we pull the string down, it's still going up the pitch. can definitely be worth practicing doing exactly what I was just talking about there and go. See, but the key thing here, this mechanic, is that we've got a pivot point there on our hand and that that is what's creating. It's almost like the fingers are locked if you pushed your fingers forward. So your hand and your fingers are square. And then you've got a pivot point on the edge of the guitar and you're just rocking your palm of your hand. You can see there how that those makes those fingers move like that. This is a fundamental technique that we use for string bending where we go... That technique, which we're not looking at today, but it's the same mechanics as that. So what you'll find is that the, the, these three fingers are kind of locked together. And it's this hand motion that makes it. It's not fingers, it's not this. It's not this. That's, that's like really bad technique to try and do that. You can hear it's getting all noisy and horrible. It's this, fingers together. And it's this wobbling of the hand. See my thumb's over the top as well. And that's creating this, helping hold the pivot point at the edge of my first finger. And then we're just... And it works with the other fingers too. Same technique. Works on every string.
Notice that I'm not really using my little finger there. It's quite possible to. It's just I never bend with my little finger. It would seem that most of the guitar players that I really like don't bend with the little finger. A few freaky exceptions, but most don't. So I don't practice doing vibrato or string bending with my little finger. It would be a choice for you to make whether you decide that you're going to do that or not. You might find it really useful to bend with your little finger or you might not. My little finger is also quite a lot shorter than the other finger, so I find it physically uncomfortable to place like all of the fingers together like that at an angle. <laughs> Just Yeah, it just feels kind of awkward for me. I would encourage you to explore this type of vibrato and to make this your default style. There are other ones that we're going to look at, but this is the most commonly used and the easiest to get sounding good under your fingers. Remember the two variables there. You've got your depth and your rate. So the amount that you bend can be very small or it can be very big. You can go, that's mostly down, but you can go up and down. <laughs> that feels weird for me. I don't tend to do it that way. In fact, I'm, it definitely, pulling it down feels a lot nicer for me than put, bending it up. Yeah, it just feels awkward for me. So it looks like that's the one I'm doing, but that's not to suggest that you should only do that one. Okay, definitely with the first finger, I kind of feel like, there's a nice, the pull of the pull of the hand, or the pull and the release feels really nice to 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 work in that way. Um, probably my favourite example of the standard vibrato guy who uses vibrato that way would be Mark Knopfler, of course, like one of the greatest guitar players that's ever lived. But his vibrato is absolutely beautiful, and he tends to favour this type. Again, I have seen clips of him using other types of vibrato, but this seems to be the one he most commonly uses. Do be aware that these different, playing around with the different variables will give you some pretty different results. One vibrato I never feel like I, I've managed to nail down myself is the BB King Butterfly or Flutter Vibrato. Where it, it is this technique, he usually does it with his first finger rather than the third finger, but you can see it's, it's this movement of the hand from the pivot with the first finger. <laughs> I find that a bit of, it's not one that comes natural to me, that doing it. Actually, and to be honest, I haven't practiced it for a little bit, but it's, But that's the one that BB uses, this kind of very, very fast, quite shallow vibrato. It's not too wide. It's not this... It's not like that. It's, it's like... It's kind of like a B. It's got a, a very, very fast, fast, narrow vibrato. Okay? Beautiful type of vibrato, but it can just be as effective in a ballad to go So it can be subtle. It doesn't have to be all wide and big and crazy I guess that would be the difference between like a standard vibrato and a rock vibrato will be the width there when it gets real wide like your Angus Young or whatever, where it's a really, really wide and still quite aggressive vibrato, that tends to be what I refer to as a rock vibrato. So really quite wide and fast. All right, so it's the same technique again, but just really turning up the rate and the depth together gives you a little bit more of that kind of rock sound. If you're looking for some other examples of fantastic rock vibrato, Joe Satriani, Steve Vai, Gary Moore, most of the really famous rock guitar gods have amazing vibrato. So give it a listen. I'm going to talk a little bit more later in the lesson about how to try and absorb the different types of vibrato for your own use. There's another type of vibrato commonly used in blues and rock guitar. I tend to call it blues vibrato because I first came aware of it watching Eric Clapton. I've been transcribing a bunch of his tunes and I was like, my vibrato never seems to be quite right. Did a little bit of watching and realized that his whole hand comes off most times, not all the time, most times when he's doing a vibrato, he plays the note. <laughs> And his whole hand, the, so there's actually none of my palm, back of the palm of my hand is touching at all. The only point of contact with the fretting hand is the note. And I'm bouncing it up and down. Now 
This is one I feel a little tricky. These cool things happening now. I don't know if you can hear it. It's like a scrape on the fret. You can hear that still the, the note's sustaining because of this scratchiness on the fret. You could just keep it going and going and going. I'm still actually unsure how exactly that works. I'm assuming it's because either the string or the fret are getting warm somehow and that's creating some friction because it doesn't happen all the time. Yes, it's not happening there either. But it is still happening on that note. I reckon it's to do with it. Oh, no, but now it's gone. Now it's gone. It will come back if I keep doing it, okay? So this hand-off vibrato requires quite a lot more pressure from the hand, okay? So you end up pressing, like pulling back and then bouncing your forearm up and down. So it's very much coming from this motion with your hand as opposed to this. This is wrist pivoting. This is ha whole forearm moving. Now, I must admit, I found that one a real struggle. It just didn't come naturally to me at all. I really had to work on being able to get it together even a little bit. It's not my go-to, it's not my first call, but I do find that there are times when I want to use it where it, it does seem to have its own kind of a flavor. And again, this is what part of the, the point of this lesson is to show you all of these different types and how they might be used. So that is one definitely useful one. You might want to watch some videos of Eric doing it and seeing the, the, his mechanics and watching and listening so that you start to absorb it again. Like I'll talk about absorbing these different types of vibrato in a little bit. The standard type of vibrato and its derivatives, including that kind of blues vibrato, like I just showed you that Clapton tends to favor, they all only rely on the pitch going up. Okay, because we, there's no way of making the pitch go below the fundamental for those. The only ways of doing that is this one, this neck vibrato, or using a whammy bar, okay? Like the little tremolo arm, which this guitar doesn't have. I do have a guitar over there that's got one, which I think I'm gonna get out in a little second just to be able to show you exactly what that one does. But this neck vibrato, I absolutely love this. Uh, it's a very, very common thing for people to feel like wobbling the neck around gives them some vibrato. So I quite often see people go, But it's not really doing anything except creating a bit of noise where I'm unable to control the strings anymore. There's like a, it's doing something, I guess. And I see it all the time. People just, yeah, I'm putting vibrato on. It's like, no, you're not. You're just shaking the guitar about. It looks weird. That if you're going to do a, a type of vibrato like this, you need to clamp the body of the guitar really tightly and you just move the neck. <laughs> So I'm actually pushing the neck forward. You can hear it's going. And if I pull the neck back, it goes up. Up. Okay, it can make your guitar go out of tune. I wouldn't do it like as extreme as you can if you're a, a strong dude, because you might end up snapping the neck. I first came across this guy, Jim Camper Longo, doing this. He does it absolutely beautifully, and it's something that I use now all the time in my plan. It's just, I just use it for a, a subtle kind of thing, particularly with chords, if I'm doing like. If I just played that. Or I did this. Turn it off. Just, I can't play that anymore, it's too flat. Subtle. Okay, it's, I most commonly use that kind of thing for chords. I don't tend to use it for single lines. I guess there's no... It's possible. I just don't tend to use it that way personally. But again, get creative with this stuff. Maybe you're like, okay, that's gonna be my thing. I'm gonna make that into my whole guitar journey is using that trick, but I just love it for chords. a 
nice thing. So I, what I'm actually doing, like I said, gripping the body of the guitar and forcing the neck forward. Because as soon as I push the neck forward, the string gets a bit looser. And it goes down, or I can pull it backwards. And pull. Okay, that's probably not a good beginner vibrato, but it can be quite a fun thing just to be exploring. It does work on acoustic guitar. I'm always a little bit more nervous about doing it in an extreme way on acoustic guitar. It's definitely possible and I use it for sure. I just don't tend to, like just then I was really kind of pushing pretty hard and I'm not sure I'd be comfortable doing that with my favorite acoustic guitars. One last type of vibrato before I go and get the guitar with the little whammy bar thing, and that is bending vibrato. Now we haven't even done string bending yet, but I want you to just be aware that it exists so that you understand this different type of vibrato, because it again is a common type of vibrato where we tend to dip down from the fundamental and back up to it rather than going above it. So a string bend is where we use our finger mechanics to bend from one note, <laughs> and turn it into another note. So we're putting this note A to this note B. By pushing the neck, the, the string across the neck, we're changing the pitch because obviously the string gets tighter, just like it would if we turned the tuning peg. We're creating more tension because the string's got further to travel. But what's really nice about this sort of thing is once you've bent up, you can release and push it back up. It's a really interesting thing about bending with vibrato. It's one of the ways that I can tell whether a note has been bent with vibrato, whether it's played, so whether it's this or this. is because the one with the bent vibrato tends to go up to the fundamental, down and back up, down and back up. Whereas if, I, if they've moved position and then put vibrato, it's the fundamental, but it's only going up from the fundamental, okay? So I wouldn't recommend getting into bending with vibrato just yet. That's much more a kind of middle to late intermediate stage. You want to learn string bending and vibrato independently before you start trying to put them together. But do be aware that it exists. Okay, so this is my beautiful uh, Patrick Eggle uh, guitar. It's the only guitar I've got with a whammy bar on it. A, well, whammy bar that's actually working, all the rest are blocked up. But this guitar actually, I, I wouldn't say the only reason I bought it was the tremolo bar, but this is an absolutely beautiful one. It's like this big solid piece of brass here in the back and it just feels really heavy and yeah, I love it. Now you can hear, obviously, when you've got a whammy bar, you can go right down or up. More commonly, people use it as like a... You get that Hank, Hank Marvin that did the... I've got to play the song because then I get in to get copyright stuff, but you get the idea. If this one's a little bit clickier, I need to uh, make a little adjustment in here with the Allen key to make it sit a little tighter. It's a little bit loose. I can hear it rattling a bit. Don't want rattly whammy bars. But... Haven't used it for a little while. Some people use it on lead, so play. Dave Gilmore does that. Lots of guitar players use the whammy bar for getting the vibrato. I don't tend to do it, use it that, in that way that often. Uh, not exactly certain why, there's definitely nothing wrong with it. It's not a cheat or I, I don't have any problem with it. It just didn't end up being my bag. But the, uh, yeah, it's got a nice thing, especially chords. Being able to get that sort of swell. Of course, you get all of those, the, the rock guys that use the harmonic and all of these. Yeah, you've got to whack too much distortion on to do that. Hang on, wait. If I turn that up and that down. All of these. Why is that not absolutely squealing? <laughs> these silly. These, like, harm harmonics and being able to... All of these kind of rock effects or whatever, that's a... Uh, <coughs> Sorry, that was a clean sound that I managed to 
smash into a just all the sounds it didn't sound very good but uh the whammy bar is commonly used by like rock or metal again uh, probably steve Vai would be in my opinion probably the greatest whammy bar user of all time jeff beck used it incredibly as oh maybe yeah jeff beck maybe jeff beck steve I, they're both amazing at doing it uh using the the whammy bar uh, you can get very accurate with a pitch. You can use all of these different. Uh, it doesn't have to just be harmonics. It's a very useful thing. Like I said, it's not really my my bag using the the whammy bar, but uh, for lots of people, it's a really intrinsic part of their sound. So that's a whole load of different types of vibrato. How do you know which one to use, and how do you actually learn them? So, like I suggested, we're going to deep dive in all of the different types of vibrato in the intermediate course. What I mainly wanted you to not do was either play a note and shake the guitar around and think you're doing some vibrato because I see that all the time on workshops, people playing and it just makes it really awkward to play if you're trying to move the neck around it and it's not really doing anything. And also to be aware of the fundamental that you're coming back to the note because you don't bend and then just randomly wobble it up and down. You need to... It needs to come back to that fundamental pitch or we hear the note as being out of tune. It's really, really imp important that you realize that, okay? So pay attention to how you're bending and, that, and what it sounds like, whether it sounds in tune or not. Now, because there's so many different types of vibrato and it's very much something that becomes somebody's voice, what I would suggest you do as the time comes for you to learn a type of vibrato, or if you're already doing some naturally and you want to refine it a bit, is to listen to some guitar players that you really like and focus your attention on their vibrato. And then try and make your guitar sound like that. Okay, focus in on just the vibrato and see what you can do to mimic it. To a certain extent, there's this, when you hear a vibrato a lot of times and it goes into your musical imagination, you're trying to f teach your body how to do the mechanics to make it sound like you have it, the sound in your musical imagination. That's the aim there. And if you go about it doing that way, then you'll probably learn different types of vibrato and you'll be able to use the one that's appropriate for the sound that you've got in your head. Okay, that's the, the, the big goal. If you're a real beginner and you've just started off on your major scale, have a bit of an experiment with the different types I've suggested to you. Just play around. Don't expect too much. Don't be expecting to be a vibrato master straight away because you won't be. It's actually a really difficult thing. There are so many little subtleties to the way it's used and uh, particularly when you're copying a singer, it's not usually vibrato on, vibrato off. It, it grows into it. So you tend, most commonly, you get a note that's played and then the vibrato comes. It hits and then it starts going vocally la very rarely does it go la, straight away people will sing la and then there'll be a bit of a brother i was exaggerating there it sounded a bit weird but the the idea there is that there's all of these different subtleties is not just the rate and the depth but how quickly the rate and the depth come on onto your vibrato. Uh, my dog is about to start going crazy. It sounds like there's somebody at the gate. So I'm going to wrap up with that. There'll be some more information over on the website. I really hope you're enjoying this. this is probably grade three. So a little bit of time working this on this before we get to the intermediate grades. You can start focusing more intensely on these different types of vibrato would do you the world of good. Hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you for plenty more lessons very soon. Bye-bye.